Have you ever experienced a plot twist in real life? Story one. So sometime last year, I got a friend request on Facebook from this girl I don't know. We have some friends in common, and her profile says she had gone to the same university and was in the same program, just a few years before me. So I figured we must have met at some party or something and accepted the request. Flash forward to July. Moved to a new city for a new job, and on my first day, bam, there's the girl who added me on Facebook. We ended up dating for a few months too. Turns out she had added me because one of our bosses has literally the exact same name as me, and she thought she was adding him to Facebook. I always thought it was a really bizarre situation. Story 2. Not a huge plot twist, but I did find this occurrence that happened to a friend rather amusing. The friend who lives on campus near me had five other roommates, each with their own rooms of course. One of the roommates was a Chinese guy who for a while had been acting strangely. He alternated between being really friendly and being cold and unsure. He'd never open his door completely when people knocked and would sometimes forget things that he'd said when referenced later. His English skills would fluctuate wildly, and he would sometimes change his clothes oddly halfway through the day. He would also usually spend all his time inside his room. He'd also make himself a rather large amount of meals throughout the day. After six months of this strange behavior, but largely not worth asking about, one day my friend came back from a class, opened the door which was next to the kitchen, looked to the side into the kitchen and there were two of the odd acting roommates staring back at her. Deer in the headlight style. Turns out he'd been hiding his twin brother in his room since he'd arrived and thought that the roommates would report him to the university if they found out. So they took turns to leave the room or watch if the coast was clear before they both came out, alternated cooking meals one at a time, etc, etc. Story 3. My little brother hitchhikes a lot. He was trying to hitch to Valdez, Alaska to run a half marathon there before hitchhiking to my parents' house near Fairbanks. He gets picked up near Seattle by a woman. They're chatting and my brother is telling her the story of how he rode his bike from Alaska to Argentina. The woman says her neighbor's son had done the same thing. Turns out she was my parents' next door neighbor. Story 4. So when my grandmother died, we all found out that when she was 13 in Argentina, her older brother, which none of us knew existed, became psychotic and was hospitalized in a mental institution. Remember, this is the 1930s Argentina. Over time, my grandma lost touch with her brother, moved overseas, and so on. It was always her secret shame that she abandoned her brother. Her brother, apparently, later died while still hospitalized, alone. Fast forward 70 years later, grandma died and my father goes to Argentina, we live in Israel now, to meet with the family and find and pay respects to said uncle's grave. He starts going from cemetery to cemetery, searching for his uncle's grave. He can't find it. Maybe he was cremated? So he starts going from mental hospital to mental hospital. Of course, we don't know where he was hospitalized. Searching through records, soon enough, he picks up on a 70-year-old trail and follows his uncle from hospital to hospital, some of which closed down decades ago. Finally, he reaches modern times, and plot twist finds his uncle alive and well. 96 years old, in a Buenos Aires mental hospital. Anyway, long story short, my dad took him out of the hospital, put him in a supported living environment, and got him 90% of the meds they had him on. Thus emerged a relatively stable but still schizophrenic old man. Epilogue. Recently, he called my aunt and said, Susan, did you know that America has a black president? Story 5. I played EverQuest about 10 years ago and joined a guild. There was this dreamy high elf cleric who was always playing at the same time as me. Who am I kidding? Everyone played all day on EverQuest. Anyways, we always played together. Sometimes out things, sometimes just sitting around in the city talking. Over the course of six months, this woman became my reason for logging on. We eventually got married in the game, which her real-life husband, who also played the game, didn't think was that funny. We were very close, and she told me many details about her personal life and her husband. It felt like I was in the shotgun end of an affair, but I didn't know any better. It felt great talking to her. My head was in the clouds. Anytime she signed on, my mood improved and I looked forward to it every day. Eventually, she sent me pictures of herself. She was a pretty blonde-haired woman of 27 years old, a 1 on the binary scale, the only honest rating system. She asked me for pictures in return, but I said no because it would be weird for a 12-year-old boy to send pictures of himself over the internet. I don't think she saw that coming, and I don't think I ever saw her again. Story 6. I walked into a new job on my first day, walked up to a guy and introduced myself. He says, no time to waste, and assigns me a few weird tasks and I start on them. I'd been working for an hour when my phone rang, and it was from the job that I just started. I answer and the guy on the phone says, you are aware today is your first day. I said, yes, I'm actually here. David gave me some stuff to do. The guy on the phone says, who's David? Apparently, a complete stranger just started telling me what to do, and I didn't think twice about it. We had a pretty good laugh. Story 7 Someone I knew at university was talking to his new girlfriend about the Glastonbury Festival. 
a huge music festival here in the UK, with around 150,000 attendees. He went every year, and it transpired out that she did, too, and had been going for years. After a while, they started comparing photos that they'd taken over the years. My friend pulls out a picture from his first visit to the festival. He's sitting on a fence with his back to a field. There are only two other people in the picture, a girl sitting about 20 feet away with her back to him, and her friend who is taking her picture. His girlfriend realizes that she was also there for the first time that year, and pulls out a picture. In it, she's sitting in a field, the only other people in the picture, out of 150,000 other people at the festival, are a guy sitting on a fence with his back to her and his friend, who is taking his picture. Story 8. Kay is my female bisexual friend. Jen was her bisexual girlfriend. Andre is Kay's boyfriend. Brian is Jen's boyfriend. A new friend Kay is dating a woman named Jen. Jen is super weird. Clingy, demanding, always accusing Kay of being shady, etc. Even accused Kay of being in a relationship with me, also female. One day I asked Kay, So, tell me how you met Jen. Kay and Jen met on a study abroad trip. Jen was romantically interested in Kay, but Kay wasn't really reciprocating. Jen was totally cool with it. They became good friends. In fact, during the trip, Jen introduced Kay via email to her cousin, Andre, male. Andre and Kay totally hit it off and start an online relationship complete with exchanging pics, etc. Andre sends Kay gifts when she returns home, including expensive jewelry. Andre also hooks up Jen with his friend Brian. Everyone is happy. Until one day, Jen finds out from a mutual friend that Andre and Brian are dead. They ran off together in a gay love affair and ended up over and just weeks before Andre was supposed to come to meet Kay in person for the first time. In their shared grief, Kay and Jen started a relationship together. Wow, quite the freaky story. In fact, I decide it sounds insane and start doing some digging. I found the picture of Andre that he sent her in a random Google search. I looked for any stories of this torrid gay love affair gone awry in a hotel drug binge. Nada. All sorts of weird. So I say to Kay, have you ever thought that maybe Andre doesn't exist? She is remarkably interested and not upset. We go to Andre's old email account. We get in using Jen's password. Yes, they share passwords because Jen didn't trust Kay. Kay loses her mind. Jen had created Andre in the whole story, complete with fake pictures, paying a male cousin of hers to have phone conversations with Kay, getting nude pictures, etc., etc. During the Andre relationship, Kay's mother died unexpectedly, and Andre paid for all of Kay's expenses to make it home for the services, etc. It was Jen the whole time. This was long crap, too. Over a year of this crap. So Kay emailed Jen from the grave of dead Andre's account and forced her to confess, after which Jen threatened to kill herself. So Kay called the police who took her to the hospital. Then Kay got a restraining order and they never saw each other again. Bonus detail. Jen even had someone, may have been Jen herself, call Kay pretending to be Andre's aunt to tell her how sorry she was that he had died, that he loved her, etc, etc. Also supposedly during this drug binge, Andre had Brian cut each other's testicles with plastic forks. Hell of a drug. Kay is married to a real person. I've met him. And has a daughter now. This incident was several years ago. Story 9. I started working at Home Depot around 2005 and was somewhat of an introvert. I graduated in 2004 and really struggled to break out of the high school mentality, not have a set group of friends to hang out with. So I start at Home Depot and a guy, Nick, I work with, invites me out drinking. I'm only 19 at the time, but he's a few years older. We ended up becoming very good friends, but haven't necessarily reached the emotional stuff beyond chicks. Fast forward a few months and my stepmom's mother died. Pretty bleak stuff, and I really just have my family to talk to. Which, of course, isn't the same at all. I'm kind of struggling. My buddy Nick is drifting away as well and the day of the funeral comes. It's towards the end and I walk up to say my final goodbyes, look over, and Nick is there staring at me dumbfounded. We high-five, hug, and find out he's my stepmom's nephew. And we were both drifting away because we didn't have anyone to bring real crap to, outside of family. Been best friends since. Story 10. I was pretty stoked to open an email from a secret admirer in my senior year of high school. Every day for almost two weeks, I'd receive a new note listing what she thought were my best qualities. How she was too shy to admit her feelings to me in person, and she'd finally reveal herself at the big dance coming up that Friday. The emails became more and more forthcoming as the end of the week approached, and finally culminated with a clue about how to figure out who she was. These are the only species besides humans that have sex for pleasure. I totally thought I was getting laid with a clue like that. I was a heavier set lineman on the football team and kind of a class clown, which meant despite my lack of confidence, I was always in with a popular crowd. So as we pre-drank from the dance, I took a few of my friends to be on the lookout for something dolphin related. Word spread quickly, and by the time we arrived, I had a huge group trying to help me solve the mystery. 
A teammate of mine found out as the night went on that Adrian, this cute girl I sat next to in social class, had a temporary dolphin tattoo on her left shoulder. After some prodding by my friends, I went over to her and the group of girls she was with. A slow song started as I sheepishly asked for a dance. With the entire school watching my two-week-long mystery reach its climax, she leaned in close and whispered in my ear, You're an asshole sometimes, promptly followed with a slap across the face. I'd never felt that level of confusion and embarrassment. She'd orchestrated the whole thing because she didn't like my class clown demeanor and social class. I still hate dolphins. Story 11. I was job searching in my early 20s. They get to this job interview and the guy didn't know I was coming. He grudgingly walks me into his office and starts asking me questions. I had been to many interviews. I just wasn't in the mood for someone to make me feel like I wasn't welcome. He asks me why I want to work here and part of my answer is, I like to help people. He responds with, bull crap. I am surprised, but I can tell this is going nowhere. The rest of the interview is formal and I end with a sarcastic, sorry to bother you. I get back to my apartment and I'm feeling down. I received a voicemail asking where I was for my interview. They say if I'm still interested in a callback. I compare the name, number, and company with a business card I was given. And it turns out I was on the wrong floor. I just walked into a random company and was given an interview. But yeah, I didn't get either jobs. Story 12 a pretty major one when I was young. My parents were divorced and I lived with my mother. Life was pretty normal until around fourth grade when my mother began telling me she suspected people had been following us. This happened often and each time her stories escalated. By fifth grade, I wasn't allowed to talk about where we were going after entering the car and I had to change in my closet because there were cameras in the house. At this point, I began to mistrust my friends after being informed by my mother their parents were plotting against us. We began moving from place to place, evading the stalkers, but each time they followed us to the new city. Finally, two months into sixth grade, I was called to the office for my fourth grade science class. Once there, I was picked up by my father, who I hadn't seen for months. He gained custody of me and took me home straight from school. During the ride home, he told me my mother had been a paranoid schizophrenic since she was young and had been neglecting her medication for the past couple of years. It was hard to believe at first that all the hardship I thought we'd been going through was entirely made up but I grew to accept it as I got older. I haven't seen my mother since the morning I left for school. Story 13. Hmm. Happened to a friend of mine. She had been feeling lonely for months and had found a guy she really got on with after meeting him gaming. Sadly, they live too far apart to meet face to face. A few months of them getting closer until he asks her out. They start e-dating. She confesses to me that she really, really likes him and she's saving money to go visit. Fast forward 14 months. She saved the money, she's booked the flight, she's going to meet the man she loves, everything is perfect, and she's flying out the very next day. Cue me getting a hysterical call late at night. It's hard to decipher what she's saying. I get her to slow down and take it easy. He's not him. I ask for clarification. He's not him, she cries. I'm still confused. I don't get it. What does that mean? He lied about what he does or his age or something? I asked. She replied, No. He lied about who he is. What he is? He's not him. He is a she. He's not Michael. She's Michelle. Turns out the girl was a lonely lesbian who looked a bit butch if appropriately dressed or made up for the webcam, and who's been using pictures of her brother the entire time for everything else. Sadly, she almost had a nervous breakdown and ended up with serious trust issues and a medium-sized case of homophobia. Story 14. A few years ago, I was in a longboarding accident and got a pretty bad concussion. The concussion caused me to forget pretty much that whole day, but my friends explained to me what happened. They told me that I had gotten scared of going too fast and tried to jump off the longboard. For two years, they ridiculed me for jumping off because jumping off a longboard is not the smartest thing to do when you want to get off. I lived with the ridicule until my best friend told me that I was pushed off by one of my friends. This isn't that big of a twist, but it really showed me the loyalty of my friends. I quickly left that group and became friends with the kids that play Dungeons and Dragons and look at Reddit. I must say, I like this group a lot more. Story 15 So technically this story didn't directly involve me, but it's pretty good as far as out of left field twists go. There was a kids baseball league in a town in Texas. They would have games a few times per week. The head and assistant coaches are dads of kids who play. During a game, the dad of one of the low skill kids gets worked up because his son is only playing the league minimum innings. The coach refuses to play the sucky kid more because he doesn't want risk pissing off everyone by throwing the game. The parent gets angrier and angrier, until by the end of the game he's busting at the seams. After the game, the guy confronts the head coach in the parking lot and takes a swing at him. They start fighting and rolling around on the ground. The wife of the head coach shows up at this point and starts screeching at the parent to get off her husband. The twist? She doesn't know the context of the fight and, only going off of the info she has, screams. 
quit fighting my husband. It's the other coach that's been sleeping with your wife. The expression when that guy froze was priceless. Story 16. So a friend once had a girlfriend and the relationship was kind of brutal. After a while, she moved back to her hometown, two hours north of Stockholm. As a friend, things seemed to be turning for the better as it seemed they were going their separate ways. And she dropped the pregnancy bomb on him. Out of guilt, duty, or love, I don't know. He decides to try to make it work as he moves to her town and tries to start a life there. The plot twist was that she wasn't pregnant. This wouldn't be so bad, unless it was for the fact that she encouraged him not to use protection. This in turn resulted in her being knocked up for real. As if she hadn't messed him over enough, she revealed after a few months into the pregnancy that she was a lesbian and had a girlfriend on the side. Really sounds like something out of one of those bad shows on TV, and needless to say, my buddy was in shambles upon returning to Stockholm to start anew. Story 17 I used to know a guy named Ben. Ben was the biggest two-faced dude I'd ever known. He once met a girl online and went out to meet her and returned a few days later. When asked about her, his female friends, he said that there was no spark, no chemistry, whatever. To his guy friends, he would say that she was ugly so he couldn't stand to look at her. Ben hated ugly women. Ben and I lived together briefly and my overweight girlfriend, later wife and now ex-wife, stayed with us frequently. She was friendly with him, would hang out with him while I was at work and frequently drove him around if he needed. As soon as she was gone though, he would laugh about how fat she was. Ben hated fat women. Years and years pass. I'm an okay cupid one day and I see a new member. She looks vaguely familiar. I look at her photos and it hits me. Ben, who was already unattractive, gained a bunch of weight and became transgendered. In essence, he became a fat, ugly woman. The very thing he hated the most. The end. Or is it? Transgender Ben briefly dated a lesbian friend of mine who lives with my ex-wife and would come to hang out not knowing he was in the house of the woman he would only a few years before making fun of for being fat. His relationship with the lesbian didn't last, needless to say. Story 18 my ex-girlfriend's mom was in hospice care dying of cancer when she told her son, my ex's brother, that the man she was married to, the man that raised him his entire life, was not his biological father. This was news to everyone involved and was later confirmed through testing. Without going into details, the man who raised my ex-brother was not the most attentive father, nor all that warm and kind. He was a bit of a drunk, they got divorced, and the kid was a big-time troublemaker. The final twist came shortly after their mom passed. The non-bio dad took the kid hunting and told him that he didn't care that he was his son, that nothing and no one was going to take that away from him. Coming from that man, it was huge, and no one expected it. They became extremely close after that, and last I heard, they still visit each other several times a week. Story 19. Well, mine was in high school. It started with me being dumped by my then first girlfriend, and Q me being a bitter 14-year-old who proceeded to love and hate her. We end up both essentially hating each other and get into an argument where I'm rather mean. She gets pissed off with me and says she's going to get her cousin to beat me up. I go on MSN a few days later and he adds me, but doesn't really seem to want to hurt me, just wants to find out why his cousin wants him to beat me up. I explain, he laughs it off and starts to befriend me a bit. We end up talking for a while and I meet up with him and with other friends. We hit it off a little too well and within a few days of hanging out with him, the guy who was supposed to beat me up ends up up with me. I assumed I was straight up until this point. I realized I'm bi and got into a semi-serious relationship with him and my ex who thinks we made a nice couple stopped hating me and we became friends. I ended up breaking up with him and stuff, but I like the story because if people find out I'm bi, which no one ever guesses, and ask me how I came out, I get to tell them this gem of a story. Story 20. So my friend told me about this one. Her best friend was dating this guy and they were pretty sure they had found the one with each other. This guy was all ready to propose and was picking out rings, so these two decide to have a th- He chooses his ex-girlfriend. At this point, any guy with a shred of common sense should know this is probably going to end badly, but this is where the twist is. The girlfriend enjoyed it a little too much and broke up with him to date his ex-girlfriend.